Welcome to this video. And what we're going to do today is look at a CDC from the United States report on COVID-19 and pregnancy. Now, this is not commenting on the well-being of the, uh, the unborn baby or the early stages of life. It's commenting on the health of the women and how likely they are to develop complications. So that's what this study is about. And to try and give you the bottom line on this, um, women who have co symptomatic COVID-19 are more prone to get more severe COVID-19 disease, more likely to get complications, more likely to require intensive care. But the overall numbers, thankfully, are fairly small. So there is an increased risk in pregnancy of getting severe COVID-19 compared to women who are not pregnancy. But the overall risk is small, is the bottom line of this video. But let's go into the, the detail of this. Now, um, risk in pregnancy, CDC, published on the 2nd of November. And the question is, are pregnant women more at risk from severe COVID-19 compared to non-pregnant women of the same age? And the answer to that, unfortunately, is yes. But, but it's, not a huge, it's not a huge amount. Now, this is the report from the Centre for Disease Control here. Now, DME, I've, I've just spent the last couple of hours on this report after looking at it yesterday as well. And it's got to be one of the worst read, uh, worst written reports. That's the hardest to read uh, I've ever come across. So we've got all this brilliant data, but it's really hard to work out what they're talking about. So do look at it for yourself, by all means. Um, and there's quite a bit of data there that, that really was written in such a contradictory way, I couldn't work it out. But what I've got on this report is data, I'm pretty sure this is what they are talking about. So um, these are things that I could take away with some degree of certainty from this uh, badly written, or in my view, terribly written paper. Now, symptomatic women aged 15 to 44, so we're talking sort of um, potential uh, childbearing years here. Now, the, the symptoms that these women were reporting were pretty well what you would uh, expect. Cough, headache, muscle aches, fever, uh, shortness of breath, all fairly common. Um, also reporting uh, sore throat, diarrhea, nausea and vomiting, abdominal pain, runny nose, loss, loss, of, uh, sorry, it's about wrong, loss of taste and smell, fatigue, wheezing and uh, chest pain. Um, so the symptoms... The symptom profile in pregnancy is what we would expect for, for any man or woman uh, in any other circumstance. So symptoms fairly similar overall. Now that, that's good to know because it's not obviously the case. But this is a bit strange. They're saying that non-pregnant women reported more symptoms and pregnant women reported less symptoms. So non-pregnant women seem to be suffering from more symptoms compared to pregnant women who suffered less symptoms but pregnant women were more likely to develop complications. That's what this report was uh, saying in its rather convoluted way. Um, laboratory confirmed infection. So these are all confirmed in the usual PCR way, as you would expect. So properly uh, diagnosed. Uh, data was collected from the 22nd of January right through to the 3rd of October. So a pretty long sample size. Now, they got results from 1.3 million nearly women aged uh, 15 to 44 who were diagnosed uh, positive for SARS coronavirus 2. But unfortunately, pregnancy status was only available on just over 400,000 of them. And among that group, um, among symptomatic women, 23,434, 5.7% were reported uh, as being pregnant. And symptomatic women who were not pregnant, therefore, works out at 386,000. So what this means is that that's the overall number. These were pregnant, uh, these were not. So add that to that and you get that. But what this means is actually we've got a really good sample size here. It means we've got over 23,000 women that are pregnant that we can compare to 386,000 women that are not pregnant. So comparing this group to this group and this group to this group gives us a really good uh, sample size. So it's essentially a, a, a controlled study 
we have these 20 of 23,000 women that were pregnant and we can compare that against uh, 386,000 that weren't good sized sample so we're expecting good data from this now um, intensive care admissions in symptomatic women um, well 10.5 versus 3.9 per thousand so pregnant women 10.5 per thousand admitted to intensive care, non-pregnant women, 3.9 per 10,000 admitted to intensive care. So we see what, two and a half, three times almost, more pregnant women, these are the ones that were pregnant, these were not pregnant. So the pregnant women, much more likely to be admitted to uh, intensive care, more likely to suffer illness that required that. So remember these were all symptomatic women but the non-pregnant ones much less likely to require intensive care. Uh, going on to receive ventilation in symptomatic women again non-pregnant 2.9 per thousand symptomatic cases in pregnant women 1.1 per thousand symptomatic cases. So again we see an increased risk of admission to intensive care and an increased risk of the need for ventilation in women that were pregnant. And the last resort, the ECMO, uh, E-C-M-O, uh, 0.7 non-pregnant women versus, um, sorry, 0.7 pregnant women versus 0.3 non-pregnant women per 1,000 cases. So again, we see a significantly increased risk in pregnancy for those requiring ECMO. Now, ECMO really is the last resort treatment. It's where blood's taken out of the body and, and oxygenated in what is essentially a, a lung machine. Uh, very severely ill people get that, but pregnant women more likely to need it than non-pregnant women. Now, what about deaths in pregnancy? Well, again, thankfully, the numbers are fairly low, but not negligible by any means. Um, so deaths in the 23,434 23, symptomatic pregnant women. Well, 35 of those, 34 of those, sorry, died 1.5 per thousand cases. So not negligible, small, but not negligible. Uh, deaths in the larger group, remember the comparison group of non-pregnant women, 447 of those died, but of course a much larger group, that equates to 1.2 per thousand cases. So again, we see more deaths in pregnant women compared to non-pregnant symptomatic women. And the study authors say that represents a 70% increased risk for death associated with pregnancy. Now remember the overall numbers are relatively small, 1.5 per thousand, 1.2 per thousand symptomatic cases, but um, not negligible by any means. The, you know, on a population scale, these would add, add up to reasonably large numbers. Now this is based on this sample from the United States, of course. No reason to assume it would be particularly different in other places. Um, although it does depend on other factors, as we'll see in a minute. Death occurred more often among women aged uh, 35 to 44 than 15 to 24. So older age group, again, slightly increased risk of dying. Now, let's look now at the uh, ethnic factor in this. Um, now, African-American, black women... 14% uh, of whom were included in this analysis. So of the overall number that was looked at, 14.1% were classified as black or African-American of the overall sample size. But they represented 36.6% of overall deaths in symptomatic women aged 15 to 44. So o overall, the deaths in women were 36 36.6% um, of overall deaths in symptomatic women, whereas you would expect it to be 14%, 14.1%. So if black women were dying at the same rate as white women, 
you would expect it to be 14.1%, but it's not there, greatly overrepresented. 36.6% of the overall deaths. Greatly overrepresented. And amongst the women that were pregnant, uh, still a greatly increased risk. Again, the number here is not 14.1%, as we would expect if it was the same, but 26 percent 5% amongst pregnant women. So we see young black women dying at a higher rate compared to the overall sample size. And we see pregnant black women also dying at an increased rate, 26.5% as opposed to the 14.1% you would expect were there no ethnic racial difference. Now, there were also increased risks of intensive care admission in Asians, Hawaiian Pacific Islanders and Hispanics, and also increased risk of death certainly in Hispanics. But to try and get the actual numbers from this paper was, was a bit confusing, so I haven't given you the numbers because I might have misinterpreted them because it's very hard to work out from this paper. They really need to do get they need to get their act together on communication here. It's a pity because the data is superb, but what we can say is certainly in the, the, who are classified as Asians, um, Hawaiian Pacific Islands and, and Hispanics, increased risk of uh, admission to intensive care and Hispanics having an increased risk of death. The point is they don't say an increased risk of death compared to what? It's assume, I assume they mean compared to the white population, but uh, it doesn't actually say that. So. Um, but they, they have an increased risk, so that's, that, that's clear from the paper. Right, the implications of this. Seek early medical advice. Prevent infection, really guarding would be appropriate in pregnancy. Care during medical encounters, going for prenatal checks and things like that. And they also recommend annual influenza vaccination. <coughs> and other vaccinations and prenatal care. So direct quotes from the paper, although the absolute risk of severe COVID-19 associated with outcomes among pregnant women were low, still remains the case that pregnant women were at significantly increased risk of severe outcomes compared with non-pregnant women. Older pregnant women slightly more at risk than younger pregnant women, black pregnant women more at risk than white pregnant women, and Hispanics, uh, Hawaiian uh, Pacific Islanders and Asians also at some increased risk. Now the numbers here are relatively small but they are they are significant. Um, I had feared it could be much worse than this so that's good um, but they the risks are increased definitely and um, definitely increased in those particular older groups and the ethnic groups would be discussed. So this data is showing clearly that pregnant women have a greater risk of complications and a greater risk of death compared to non-pregnant women of the same age when you account for uh, pre comorbidities and when you account for all the complications. That risk is still there. So that is... Um, good to know and I think it really does mean that um, pregnancy is an indication for certainly much much greater caution in terms of uh, in terms of shielding. What this paper does not comment on uh, is uh, fetal outcomes and uh, baby health outcomes. It has nothing to say about that, it's purely about the women. So I um, hope that was helpful. Um, there's an increased risk, but it's not as bad as I feared it could have been, but it's uh, it's not negligible, I think is the takeaway from, from this. So hopefully uh, more data from the Centre for Disease Control and uh, if, we get, if there is a better written paper comes out that yields more intelligible data, I'll certainly bring it to you. But look at it yourself by all means, but I'm pretty confident what I've told you there is uh, what is stated in that paper from the Centre for Disease Control. So thank you for watching as always.